This is Jay Donovan with TechCrunch. We're here at the Capital Factory in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest 2014. Here with Ladar Levison, founder of LavaBit, encrypted email service. We're, uh, we're going to just have a quick conversation about where things have been and where they're headed. So, Well, Jay, thank yeah. you for having me. I've been given a soapbox and I kind of feel like it's my responsibility to stand on it and speak about these issues for as long as people will listen to me because of how important they are and, you know, hopefully what will come of my speaking out is we as a society will learn some lessons and be able to change the circumstances that led to me having to make a very terrible choice between two very bad options. Right, and so as a little background, you know, many people out there probably know about Lava Bit, what happened with Edward Snowden. For the people that don't, a quick recap, you know, Edward used your service, Lava Bit. It was an encrypted email service. In short, you fought the law, the law won, but you didn't really go down without, you know, without a fight. It's been reported that Edward Snowden was a user of LavaBit, but I think the issue at hand is far larger, and of course I can't speak openly about who the subject or subjects of the investigation were. Um, but ultimately it was a much larger question, uh, one that would have surfaced in any high-profile investigation, and that was whether or not the feds are entitled to access everyone's telecommunications, particularly their emails. And if they can break open an encrypted channel with a sledgehammer and search through, rifle through everyone's emails just to find those of the people that they're interested in without any kind of oversight or auditing is a very important question for our society. And they effectively tried to settle it in secret by steamrolling me as a small business not giving me enough time to find adequate counsel, not giving my counsel adequate time to prepare an appropriate defense, and only because I decided to effectively protest against the decision by shutting down my service, do we, does the public even know what happened? Right, and, and that's ultimately what happened, right? They, they said, give us the keys, and, and you said, I'm shutting down. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. And so, would well, they, you? Would they you said, have changed? Give me the keys. We need this information to solve a crime. And I printed them out and I handed them over. Eleven-page document, I believe, with the key, which was the key took eleven. Well, certainly. 11 I mean, they long. spent six weeks dragging me through court yeah. to get them. I figured the least they could do would be type in the twenty-five hundred character key. But no, they decided to start charging me five thousand dollars a day until I turned them over in electronic form. Now, okay. the truth is. I gave the keys to them in paper form because I had already decided that if I had to surrender the keys in secret, the only ethical option available to me would be to shut down the service in response. And what I needed was time to execute that plan. And the time it would have taken them to type those keys in was the time I needed to shut down the service. Okay. You know, something that I was thinking about, if you would have gone along with what they requested, uh, you know, you know, from the outside, it, it seems like the reputation, your reputation might be at stake, right? If, if they ask you to give the keys and you just kind of rolled over and did, uh, maybe well, certainly. in the future people would not be as trustworthy of you for future businesses. One of ventures. the many questions that I had to raise, and I raised to the feds, although it had no meaning to them, was the problem of continuing to advertise a secure and private service after turning over the keys and knowing that they had unfettered, unmonitored, unaudited access to everyone's communication. But ultimately, I wasn't concerned with my own reputation and my own self-interest. What I was concerned with were the constitutional questions. The fact that they would be violating everyone's privacy from myself down the chain. And I was completely uncomfortable with that occurring in secret without any kind of public discussion as to whether it was right or wrong. Let's talk about the future. Dark mail, that's your new, that's, is that the evolution of Lava? But why don't you describe what your vision for this new, new service is a little bit? Well, I've been thinking about this problem for a long time. Um, and I've wanted to move the encryption from the server down to the client for a very long time. But I couldn't do it 
given the existing suite of mail protocols. And my original idea was to integrate SMTP extensions into the SMT protocol that would support the automated exchange of GPG keys. But it has a bunch of problems. It doesn't protect meta information. Um, it's easy to man in the middle such an attack, etc. So dark mail is really an effort to reinvent the mail protocols from the ground up in a way that is secure end to end. And if things go the way you're planning, when do you think a, a, a larger beta might be available to the public? When do you think a real product might be launched to the public? Do you have any? I'm still hoping people will be able to at least use an experimental version of this software by the end of the summer. Well, I decided when I accepted money from the public via the Kickstarter that it was my responsibility to ensure this gets built. Great, last question. You came into town to see Edward Snowden uh, as part of South by Southwest, and so you went to the presentation. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? You know, how did you feel about how it went off? What struck me was the fact that I was sitting in a room that probably held at least 5,000 people, and I couldn't spot more than three open chairs in the entire room. Everybody was glued to the screen listening to what that man had to say, Mr. Snowden. And I think he did a masterful job explaining why he did what he did. It was to prompt the very discussion that you and I are having right now. And I agree completely with his interpretation of the Constitution and his logic behind why this discussion is so important. Our democracy cannot function when our government is allowed to interpret laws, interpret the very constitution that it goes by in secret. He also delivered a very important message. This was a room full of developers like myself. And he said the very same thing that I've been saying for the last couple of months, and that's simply this. We spent the first 40 years of the internet focused on trying to make things work. I think we're going to spend the next 10 focused on trying to make them securely. Because by doing so, we're going to make bulk surveillance technologically impossible in the future. So the government has a different opinion, right? And, and when you... The government's embarrassed. Like anyone caught with their hand in the cookie jar, their cheeks turn red, and they go defensive. And it's really disappointing. It's disappointing that Obama was unable to stand up in a room full of five-star generals when he became president and say, this is wrong, and put a stop to it then. And it's even more disappointing now that the public is telling him that it's wrong, that he continues to think it's right. And we heard that in his speech in January when he said, yes, the programs probably need to change, but he never said they need to end. He never said the government should lose access to our private information. He wants his intelligence agencies to have access to the recorded communications history of everyone. I think we as a society, we as individuals, should be able to make mistakes and not have a permanent record of those mistakes not because they're against the law, but because they might be embarrassing. And if they're embarrassing, they can be held over our heads and used to control us. And that's not what a power we want anyone in our government to ever have. Because even if you trust the current administration, that administration changes every few years. And who's to say who's gonna be occupying the White House in four years? We don't have to look very far in history to find an example where a society slipped over the line without realizing. Okay, so that's, uh, that's your opinion on that. So, uh, yeah. And it, I think it's very similar to what he said. Ladar Levison, thanks very much for talking Thank to us you, here Jay. at TechCrunch. Wish you the best of luck and keep us in the know on what's going on with Dark Mail.